The idea is to give yourself freedom and no rules in your journaling practice. The only person judging you there is actually yourself. You are your own worst critic. And so you criticizing your own journal or your handwriting or your thoughts is not fair because that's a place for you to just express and let it be. I've been in a series about journaling because it's near and dear to my heart. It's something that literally saved my life when I was a teenager, gave me that outlet to express myself on a personal level. I was able to pour myself into journals and it really saved me from a dark time in my life. I've continued that practice for almost 35 years now and it's become not only a huge stack of journals, all over the house, <laughs> but it has become the number one way that I have found myself on the other side of trials and difficulties and obstacles. I found myself on the other side and I call it journaling myself whole. I found the journaling practice to be something that has not only the value of bringing a self-expression into your life, but helping you to emotionally work through a lot of challenges. And so how do we start that and continue it? Because starting it sounds fun. You get to go shopping for a nice new journal that excites you and then look for the perfect pen and pour yourself a cup of coffee or tea and get cozy and start to journal. And a lot of times people will feel excited by having the journal and, you know, setting a new intention. But one week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, a year down the road, it sits on the shelf like everything else. And you kind of get an ick feeling of failure where you think, oh, it's just another one of those things that I started and didn't continue. In fact, I ran a poll on my Instagram asking people what their number one challenges or let's say obstacles or fears related to journaling. And a lot of people express to me that they don't want to start and not continue that they feel that their personality would be too sporadic and not want to continue journaling. And so I'm here today to squash that fear, to help you and release you to embrace your journaling practice no matter what it looks like, because it's actually okay if your journaling practice is sporadic. I would love to encourage you to have a daily practice, even if it's just writing down your, you know, your daily gratitudes or intentions. But if you can't maintain a journal practice daily and it's sporadic, then call it your sporadic journal. The idea is to give yourself freedom and no rules in your journaling practice. To get started is fun and easy. And I wanna give you some tips. Of course, to get started, you do wanna set some intentions. You wanna decide that journaling is for you. It's something that you want to do. You wanna set aside the time and set the environment. And perhaps you have a certain intention in mind. I encourage you to start small with those intentions because you might think, oh, Mary Janelle, I've always wanted to write a memoir. I've always wanted to leave a journal for each of my kids. And wouldn't it be fabulous if I could just like journal, you know, for the next two months straight and get it all out. And some people operate that way beautifully. It's, it's a way that they can, can do something creative like that. But for the most of us, we need to set small intentions where we get a journal and we decide every day, I'm going to write at least one thing I'm thankful for. And I'm going to do it at a certain time. If you can't, set the environment to have a cup of tea and sit on the couch like I do, put the journal by your toothbrush and journal in the bathroom or, you know, set a time or a place in your life amidst your regular routines and habits and implement that journal time in, when it's in your face. When you say, oh, every time that I'm brushing my teeth, I have to write what I'm thankful for. And, you know, you can execute journaling like journaling is meant to be a joy and a hobby so using the word execute doesn't even feel like the right word to use but in a sense in order for us to build habits and to to 
integrate something new into our life naturally, we kind of have to start executing it. We have to make it happen. And so how can you make this happen? One of the ways really is to start small. And I also want to encourage you to choose a technique. Now there's a lot of different techniques out there and I go into this much further sharing all the different kinds of journaling check out my links. But as you know, you might be familiar, there's bullet point journaling and conscious flow journaling. I even do sticky note journaling when I'm working on a project and I'm just brainstorming ideas and I want to move the stickies around and think things through in different patterns or, you know, I, I just love that. And so there's all these different ways that you can do journaling. They can be very visual if you're artistic and there's options. But one, you know, when you go shopping for the journal or you get the tools to do this, you kind of need to pick that technique and really explore that technique because those techniques have no limits. You're able to really express freedom within the techniques, but you kind of have to stick with the technique in order to know what avenues it allows for you. So for me personally, the main journaling form, the technique that I practice is something that I call conscious flow journaling. And it's essentially where you put pen to paper and you let whatever's in your heart flow out. But I do have other exercises that I share and can give to you within having that technique of conscious flow where I will have different things that I do, as I mentioned, like flipping the fear, rewriting the narrative. And I've done this over the years without without really knowing or understanding what I was doing, I was building my own library of exercises that helped me because I found that, you know, as we all know, we're each unique individuals. I'm highly creative. I'm highly sensitive. I am prone to worry. I have anxieties in the winter. I get the blues. I have all of these intricacies that make me me. And Often I used, have used my journaling as a tool to work through my complexities and to digest or sort out my worries. Mary Janelle, what's really worrying you? Let's break it apart and understand this. And funny enough, at the end of a journaling session, I have way less worries because I've seen the worst case scenario and the best case scenario and thought, huh, I'm really worrying about not much here. And so uh, that might have been a bunny trail on what I was intending to bring up uh, about in the point here is choosing your technique. And for me, it's conscious flow. And I've been able to explore all the realms of conscious flow journaling. But you might say, you know what, I'm the type of personality I can really only do bullet point. I don't want to write pages and pages, which conscious flow, you don't have to write pages and pages. You can start with a paragraph and build from there if you wish. And so, but I do encourage you to choose a technique that suits you and that you feel that you can start small and carry out and continue. And then, of course, to create your environment and to set the tone, set the mood in the room or space that you want to journal. And sometimes I don't even journal in the full light. Often it's dim. I will journal by a dim light in the early morning or late night and I'll dim the lights because sometimes I can't fully clean up the way that I would want to tidy in order to have my environment quote unquote perfect. We know there's no perfect, but quote unquote perfect. And I will often just dim the lights or, you know, sit in situated in such a way that I don't see all of the other chaos and just quiet my mind. And I've learned to put myself into the flow of journaling pretty quickly. But if you're new at it, and you're seeking like tips and advice on how to get going, I'd say try to set your mood and have your materials all gathered and ready to go and try to establish that routine. And as I mentioned, it can be an odd routine like in the bathroom or wherever you can, especially if you know journaling is important to you. If you know it's a practice you really want to develop, we can make the time for anything 
that we actually want. And when there's a will, there's a way. And so if you want journaling to be part of your daily practice in life, you will and can find a way. I also encourage you to embrace the imperfection of it. I really like to say that there's no rules within your journal. It is a place for personal expression. The only person judging you there is actually yourself. So you are, we are our own worst critics. You are your own worst critic. And so you criticizing your own journal or your handwriting or your thoughts is not fair because that's a place for you to just express and let it be. Let it be you, let it be authentically what's in your heart and mind at that time. And so embracing the imperfection of it all. There's some pages in my journal that are so eloquently written. I look, I'm like, wow, how did you do that so spontaneously, Mary Janelle? It just sounds like, you know, it should be a poetry book. And I get all like, wowed. But the majority, so that might come every, you know, 50 to 100 pages. There might be something really eloquent. The majority of what's filling these books and books of journals that I have is chicken scratch of thoughts and random and I just like let it all out and I'll have a feeling about this and then I'll hop over to that. But at the end of the journaling session, a lot of my life and thoughts make sense to me because they're first out of my mind. So they're not jumbling, you know, jumbling up my attention anymore. But so they're out of my mind, but they actually getting out on the paper has helped me to process and digest. And I'm like, wow, I'm a lot more clear. And I feel a lot better. It's a huge emotional and mental release to just get all the thoughts out and the feelings. And another way that I really continue is like, sometimes I might not feel like journaling. And I'm like, I don't know if I have something that I really need to say or vent, but I'll pick up my journal and I'll reread. Now, some feel that rereading isn't great because they just want to move forward. They don't want to look backwards, but I personally have found that rereading reminds me of how far I've come and it actually inspires me generally to write something more. So I tend to reread and then move forward. And so you may like to reread and that's why it's important that maybe in the beginning you do establish a big spurt of journaling where if you're really enthused when you start a journal and you want to write in it every day and establish the journal go for it don't hold back it doesn't even if you have that intention I'm going to write one gratitude a day and more and more wants to come out of you let it because what will happen is you'll establish, let's say, that, that first 10 or 20 or 30 pages. And then perhaps you'll have a big break, you know, even a couple weeks or a month. And you'll come back and be able to reread what you established and launch from there. And it is a moving forward to even do a reread. But rereading really helps me to continue. And the last and final tip that I can say is that you just start again. When you feel like you've lost the habit or the interest, you you pick it back up again and you start again. And I am here to give you the freedom of knowing that it's okay to have a sporadic journal practice. It's okay if it's not a daily practice. It's okay if it is what it is. That is one of the most beautiful things about the personal journal is that it can become what you want and what you need it to be. I hope that some of these journaling tips have helped you today, encouraged you today of how you can not only start with enthusiasm, but continue the practice and not feel bad about it if it's sporadic. You know where to find me. All of my links are below. Find me at maryjanelle.com. You can support this show through the link that you'll see there called Buy Me a Coffee. It's a way that you can give a donation to help support the funding of the show, making it possible. Please leave a review on YouTube. Hit the like and the share and the bell and send the links to a friend. If you think that a friend who's journaling will find this helpful, I'd love it if you share it around. Until next time, keep journaling and keep on in the full potential of you.
The idea is to give yourself freedom and no rules in your journaling practice. The only person judging you there is actually yourself. You are your own worst critic. And so you criticizing your own journal or your handwriting or your thoughts is not fair because that's a place for you to just express and let it be. I've been in a series about journaling because it's near and dear to my heart. It's something that literally saved my life when I was a teenager, gave me that outlet to express myself on a personal level. I was able to pour myself into journals and it really saved me from a dark time in my life. I've continued that practice for almost 35 years now and it's become not only a huge stack of journals, all over the house, <laughs> but it has become the number one way that I have found myself on the other side of trials and difficulties and obstacles. I found myself on the other side and I call it journaling myself whole. I found the journaling practice to be something that has not only the value of bringing a self-expression into your life, but helping you to emotionally work through a lot of challenges. And so how do we start that and continue it? Because starting it sounds fun. You get to go shopping for a nice new journal that excites you and then look for the perfect pen and pour yourself a cup of coffee or tea and get cozy and start to journal. And a lot of times people will feel excited by having the journal and, you know, setting a new intention. But one week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, a year down the road, it sits on the shelf like everything else. And you kind of get an ick feeling of failure where you think, oh, it's just another one of those things that I started and didn't continue. In fact, I ran a poll on my Instagram asking people what their number one challenges, or let's say obstacles or fears related to journaling. And a lot of people express to me that they don't want to start and not continue that they feel that their personality would be too sporadic and not want to continue journaling. And so I'm here today to squash that fear, to help you and release you to embrace your journaling practice no matter what it looks like, because it's actually okay if your journaling practice is sporadic. I would love to encourage you to have a daily practice, even if it's just writing down your, you know, your daily gratitudes or intentions. But if you can't maintain a journal practice daily and it's sporadic, then call it your sporadic journal. The idea is to give yourself freedom and no rules in your journaling practice. You know where to find me. All of my links are below. Please leave a review on YouTube. Hit the like and the share and the bell and send the links to a friend. If you think that a friend who's journaling will find this helpful, I'd love it if you share it around. Until next time, keep journaling and keep on in the full potential of you.